fire away with a question. Okay. Yes, I would. I would. Um, so, as you know, I'm Samita, and I have this label uh, called Dida, Dida, which focuses on eco gifts, organic children's toys, you know, lifestyle products, a little bit of fashion, uh, but primarily the focus is on something natural, something basic, and um, artisanal, you know, handcrafted, handmade artisan products. Now, when um, all of these, the, you know, the whole virus thing, it started changing our lives drastically. I thought I would do something a, a little different with my socials. Mm -hmm. So instead of just peddling my products, I started doing blogs and blogs and sharing my lifestyle, you know, my life skills, my experiences with my friends and clients and members of Didarati, which is the Dida Mail Club. And uh, thank you, your... Um, feedback and your support has been amazing, Didarati. Uh, uh, in fact, after I did the uh, little vlog on stay at home kids, a lot of you came back to me and said, Samita, why do you not share some recipes or some craft ideas? So now I can handle craft ideas, but my culinary skills don't go very far. So that's when I thought about reaching out to Milanka, Milanka Giordano. Now Milanka is a friend and a client and a, and a very um, you know committed member of Didarati. And uh, Milanka also happens to be a professionally qualified commercial cook. She runs her food blog, which is very interesting. So check out Milanka's fine foods. Um, Milanka and I resonate on different levels because like myself, she brings global influences into her culinary aesthetic. And the focus again is on natural, on healthy and on organic. Now, without further ado, I would uh, like Milanka to uh, speak about herself. What is, she, what is it that, that she does? And why, in the first place, did she start cooking? And what's this, this, this her passion about cooking? When did it start? And did it start in the childhood? And um, how it's blossomed, you know? So over to you, Milanka. Maybe you enlighten our uh, friends and clients uh, about yourself and what, what is it that you do? Yeah, Milanka. Hi, everyone. Thank you. And thank you for that lovely introduction, Samita. Hi, everyone. I'm Milanka and I run a food block which is called Milanka's Fine Food. I'm also a um, cook by profession. Um, I have trained just recently, a couple of years ago, I fulfilled that dream. I started cooking when I was 10 years old. Now that for some people today may spark some fears, but do not fear. In When I was growing up, there was a necessity. We were migrants. We came to Australia. Both my parents were working. I had a younger sibling, 10 years younger than myself. So I often had to go into the kitchen and help out. And that's where it started. And over the years, one of my passions was to always continue cooking and to expand on it, to learn and to always welcome um, everything that was around me. And one of the things that I am very passionate about, like Samita mentioned, is having homegrown things, if you can. Um, if you are unable to do that, well, try and buy the freshest ingredients you possibly can. Always remember that because the fresher the fruit and vegetables are, the healthier you will be by eating them. So um, with going into that direction, um, I actually trained as secretary. I worked in the administration field for many years. And one day I just happened to decide that enough. I was going to put that aside and start following my dream. And back about 2011, that's when everything changed for me, I decided to um, leave work. I worked in the school at that time. I was the administration person involved in looking after about 486 kids at some times. One year it was less, one year it was more. And 
Following that, I sort of um, had a lot to do with kids as well. So I did first aid. So often I would have kids in the sick bay, etc., during lunchtime and various times, you know, helping out, calling the parents and making sure the kids were safe and well looked after before the parents came to pick them up. So that was part of my sort of administration role. And once I finished there, I decided to follow up and look into a commercial cookery class or school. So I ended up completing my course here in Melbourne, which is at Home Glen College in Moorabbin. And I finished that back in 2018. So I was happy to finish that. And from there on, I sort of did a little bit of catering, did my blog, um, got involved with a few other projects around and because of my age and I'm sorry to say <laughs> um, I can step back a little bit and have a little bit of time to myself and focus on all the things that I like so that that's sort of my background in that area so yeah so that's me wonderful. in a nutshell <laughs> wonderful good to hear you know uh, yeah we we all like following our passion isn't it if you like what you uh, do then exactly yeah, exactly then yeah. you, you don't feel tired or like people ask me but yeah no. I, I i love what i do and, and I'm, I'm never tired yeah so that's uh, right the, the next question is, you know, there are kind of two opinions about children working in the kitchen. Now, some of us, I remember my grandmother would always say that, you know, you don't have to be in the kitchen. Of course, she had a retinue of servants, which was another thing, you know, uh, but <laughs> yeah. she said it was not a safe place for children. Whereas I feel that, you know, in this day and age, it's very important that children learn basic skills right from the beginning. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that children should learn something right away and, you know, as soon as they can? So obviously, um, you know, we have to have guidelines in place. But yeah, your Absolutely. thoughts. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, I do believe, I think it's really good that parents get their children involved from a young age and parents will know what their children children's capabilities are at certain ages. And, you know, if a child is at five, six, well, you know, they might sit on the bench and mum might be making something with herbs. Well, they can pick the leaves off the herbs. That's a safe thing to do. So think about what, you know, what type of jobs um, you would like your child to do in the kitchen. Um, when they get a little bit older, well, then they can wash up. One might dry, etc. So there's always something to do in the kitchen, setting the table. That's a relatively easy task. One might fold a napkin while the older one might set up the cutlery on the table so that everyone can sit around and enjoy their dinner. Um, I totally think that, yes, that is a great way to start in the family home and in your own kitchen because you know what the boundaries are in the kitchen. Your mum has already set certain guidelines and boundaries, etc., to make sure that you understand where the safe things are, where possibly things are not um, reachable for you as yet. So, yes. And when I think back, and yes, I was quite young at the stage when I started cooking. However, we didn't have as many regulations. So... Families would depend on their children to help out and do certain tasks. So, as I say, safety first, and then you, you as a parent will set the boundaries, set the guidelines, and educate your kids along the way to see which are the safest jobs for them to do. That actually brings me to my next question. Um, as an expert cook and a professional, like, you know, you, you have such a lot of expertise in the kitchen. So uh, what would you advise to a parent is what are the safeguards or what is it that the parents should be mindful of when their children are working in the kitchen or making, as you said, picking herbs or making a simple salad or a fruit salad or something like that? What is it that one sure. has to be mindful of? Okay, like for instance, for example, you said fruit salad. Mm. Well, I think a child can then perhaps um, with parent supervision, get up on a stool or something near the sink and wash all the fruit 
mm. that needs uh, washing. The parent can then chop the fruit, put it, and the child can then perhaps pick the fruit that's been chopped and put in the bowl. So they are actually involved in creating um, a dish that they will eat later on. Mm. So that's sort of the type of um, safety features that need to sort of um, be around while um, you're in the kitchen with your child. Of course, you know, appliances, you've got to be aware of which appliances they can use, which they can't use. And I think that every parent um, keeps everything at a level that their child can't reach. And that's a safety precaution. So, and every, all the switches off. I always, even in my household, just to save on power, you switch what you don't use off at the um, switch. And that's it. So, yeah. and I some, hope that helps. <laughs> parental, parental supervision, I think, to have someone. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, totally. Always. Uh, I cannot highly sort of um, recommend that parent supervision in the kitchen is very important. Absolutely. Very. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when children are staying, so some of my clients have actually, you know, the, the, the re complained that Samita, because, you know, we keep working and we keep talking to one another. And one of them, she, she told me that Samita, my head is spinning. I cannot think clearly. I have children. I'm homeschooling them and they are forever hungry. So that's when I thought mm. if they are hungry and they, they can actually contribute to making the, uh, if, they, if they want a snack, they can make the snack, isn't it? So um, that's, that's right. Why it's in, you know, they should learn that it, they don't have to always go to mom and they can look after themselves or, you know, uh, at least give mom a helping hand. Um, so, of course, yes. And uh, as, a, as a textile professional, as, as someone associated with garments and textiles, you know, we have, we always think about attire for specific professions like you know mm -hmm. so uh, what kind of attire would you suggest for the like we do these parent and child aprons which are very very uh, popular yeah. uh, but in general what kind of attire should from safety point of view from comfort point of view what is it that you would advise parents and children uh, to wear in the kitchen and and as as us you know the designers your feedback is very important um, so, yes, if you can just uh, highlight a few things okay. you would want us to observe, you know, as parents, cool. children and as designer okay. attire. Yeah, please. Okay. In the kitchen, um, every kitchen has uh, tea towels. Um, I can never, I, when I cook and when I'm doing production cooking, I can never have enough. It's just, I'm constantly using them, wiping things down, uh, re, you know, getting out um, fresh clean ones because, um, because of the regulations, everything always has to be spotless and clean. Um, the other thing I never go without is an apron. And I have to say, your aprons are very bright and chirpy and I'm wearing one now, so yeah. thank you very much. And I've got the gorgeous, um, party animal one, which is um, looking very good. If I stand up, I'm hoping people will see it. So here you go. This is one of the most used things in a kitchen, an apron. I don't leave home without it because I never, when you're cooking and you're doing things very fast, you will end up spilling things on yourself it, it's not a good look and when i'm sort of catering if i go somewhere and need to cook there i always make sure that i have a few spares with me as well as tea towels always always i never leave home without it and in the kitchen in my opinion you always have to be comfortable like today i've i've got very comfortable shoes with a rubber sole then the shoes need to be all closed mm -hmm in case that you're doing something on the stove and you're working with hot oil, you know, boiling water, your shoes need to be closed. And one of the things that I have are the professional cooking clogs because mm. they also you um, have a lovely grip on the surface. Mm. You don't slip if someone has spilt water or anything on the floor. So they grip to the floor and they are very important. And of course, 
um, good solid um, pants, uh, top, always long sleeve mm. um, in the kitchen mm. when I'm cooking commercially. And even at home, I always try to have long sleeves. So they're the things that really you need to have um, as sort of safety features. Mm. In a commercial arena, slightly different because all the commercial jackets have those quick um, stud buttons so that if anything, if anyone's injured, they can quickly pull everything off and get rid of it in case they've got hot oil or if something's caught a light. It's a slightly different sort of, um, you know, uh, attire that you have to wear. But always at home, apron, and lots of tea towels, a must, and mittens when you go to the oven. They're a must because whenever you're touching anything that's hot, you just want to be safe and make sure that you don't get burnt. So they're the things. Yes, I'll take your advice on board because I always get scalded. You know how you know the spices tend to splutter and we do a lot yep. of that You know, in Indian cooking. We have to put yes. the spices in hot oil and I'm always, you know, I, I, I'm not careful and I get scalded and my husband being a health professional, he gets very upset with me. So now onwards, I would make it a point to wear full sleeve garments, you know, I think that would help. Good idea. Yeah. And, yeah, um, good idea. And also natural fabrics, I guess, because polyester catches, you know, fire very quickly, yeah. I would say. Yeah. It, am I correct? The yeah, cotton, basically cotton type yeah. Um, fabrics. Yeah. yeah, so they're the things, you know, if you're looking at the professional jackets, but I'd highly recommend just cotton and yeah. that's it. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, when you talked about closed shoes, that was the first thing uh, I would tell my students to follow in the sewing room because yeah. like yourselves, you know, you have hot surfaces and uh, smoking hot oils and we have pins and needles and things like that. So I think both for your profession and mine, uh, closed shoes are very, very important. So uh, yeah. we all need to be mindful of that. Yes. Now, uh, Milanka, it's a little personal question. You said sure. you were just talking about um, you know, the Dida's aprons. And you know, I'm not the only yes. one who's making aprons, right? But you just said that you like Dida's apron. So uh, what is it that you like about us? I mean, you you have worn a few of our, you know, um, scarves. I have. Uh, yeah, you know, lovely. Garments. Lovely. Yeah, garments, <laughs> yes. I have. And do you, yeah, and I, do you know, I still have the wonderful um, uh, top that I bought many, many years ago. Right. And I still wear it. Yeah. yeah, and I have some of your lovely scarves yes, and I still do. wear those. Yes. I love them. Yeah, they're great. This so is, yeah. with, in regard to your lovely um, aprons, I think they're bright, chirpy and cheerful. And I think that um, they're attractive in that sense and you want to be, feel bright and happy when you're working in your kitchen. And have, so have, 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 have that's a my little description. Yeah, and I have a point of difference, isn't it? That's what we try to, we try right. to be a little different. Yeah, yeah. a little quirky, quirky. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, that's, that's, that's exactly, that's the word I was looking for. You know, I wanted it to come there. from you, but that's <laughs> what we work towards, you know, making quirky, it's eco, but it's also fun, you know, so we exactly. combine two things. Um. I would ask you, you were just talking about before we started, you know, formally talking about all of these things, you were talking about mittens and tea towels, which um, yep. are a great idea. So give us your, you know, a, a wish list that you might have. What is it that you would want to see from Dida next? We have started working in the realm of kitchen. Uh, and we've yeah. been very, very uh, touchwood successful. Uh, it's a lot of positive yeah. feedback from our clients and new clients coming yeah. on board. Uh, what is it that you would want us to do in future, you know, design-wise, product-wise? You know, you did talk about mittens, uh, but if you can, you know, tell our uh, clients and elaborate a little bit on those kind of things, that'll be nice. Um, look, uh, I think that napkins, napkins, hand... Um, 
cotton napkins or fabric napkins are great, especially for people that are a little bit more environmentally conscious. Yeah. It may be easier for people to just wash them up um, iron them or dry them in a dryer, fold them up and place them on the table. Tablecloths. I still have a lot of my girlfriends who love putting a tablecloth on the table um, and setting up the table, you know, beautifully. Uh, and I admire that. Um, so there's those two things. Definitely, in my opinion, the mittens, because I go through a lot of mittens and they've got to go in the wash regularly. So at this stage, they're the three things that come to mind. However, if I think of anything else, yeah. I will definitely put it out there. Placemats, that's yeah. the other thing. You know, placemats for the table. I think mm. they're wonderful. And all my placemats, are, placemats I should say, are made of fabric mm. because I can actually easily just pop them in the machine, wash them and use them. Mm. So four things so there you go four things that i think would be very handy in anyone's kitchen and home yeah and as a professional you know a uh, culinary expert or cook you know i would ask you i have always thought about this you know there are mittens which are like gloves and there are mittens yep. which are like a long piece of fabric with two little gloves on either end mm. you know Oh, uh, yeah, I saw your expression. So, obviously, you prefer the mittens, isn't it? The gloves, like, you know. I, I do because I don't like being restricted. Right. And I find that, um, you know, um, it's easier for, um, for me to be able to be free with that. So, yeah, so preferably for me, I would prefer the mittens. The mittens, yes. And... Yes. Uh, uh, Fabric preferences, would you prefer it to be organic because it has something to do with food? So organic means that it has no toxins, no nothing. So yes. Or would you prefer, would you, would you be, would you, would you not care? Like, you know, if, uh, um, even look, I think there's a, hmm. sorry, go on, continue. I interrupted. Continue. No, no, that's fine. So I just wanted to find out that because organic cotton, let's face it, can be a little more expensive. Little, you know. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But organic cotton is also sustainable and non-toxic. And, you know, it yep. doesn't uh, add anything vicious to your food, you know, the, your food that you're okay. making. Okay. Yeah. So would you prefer that or do you not really, it doesn't really matter to you, uh, you know, so uh, how... Uh -huh. uh, if if I can manage it financially, I would probably go for the you know organic stuff. Mm -hmm. If my budget isn't um, you yeah. know up to scratch, as one might say, well mm -hmm. then I'd buy what is it within my budget. However, yeah. before I use anything, I thoroughly wash it, mm -hmm. and with mittens and certain things, it's fine because you've already cleaned it and you're just grabbing trays out of the oven. It's not so bad. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it's a personal preference depending on your budget. But, hey, we've all had to occasionally be uh, mindful. Mm -hmm. So whatever, if you can manage to do both, fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a really strong preference to sticking to having just um, organic then fine but look I I have I have used both and mm. that's that's all I can say honestly mm. no we try to kind of balance you know both things we try to make mm. it affordable I know you wouldn't want to spend you know I don't believe in having designer towels and uh, charging like exorbitant fees or you know it has to be a happy marriage between the price and the, you know, right. the product um, that's right anything else you know because we are on nearing the end of the meeting so anything mm -hmm. else that you would want our, um, our listeners our audience to take away from you know so one last tip like I, I I wouldn't ask you anything. I just let it come from you. One one last tip okay. uh, to keep children occupied in the kitchen. Like you know, just make life a little easier for mums. So yes. Um, look, I think that if they are going to do some cooking, you know, create a little bit of a preparation area. Always prepare yourself. Make sure that everything's ready to go, and then you can be there and available to assist the kids 
and if they need help with certain tasks. So, you know, um, like chopping onions, like for instance, I did a video for you to upload today. I chopped the onions. In the video, I said that the assistant chefs or yeah. cooks to the little, to the cooks will be the ones, meaning the adults will be the ones doing all the chopping, exactly. all the things that perhaps the little ones can't do. So I think if you prepare everything together, work together, it will make the end product a little bit easier because the kids are always kids. <laughs> they get a little bit distracted. So you need to sort of call them back in to perhaps continue doing a little task like picking leaves off all the herbs. After maybe five minutes, it might get a little bit boring. Hmm. Perhaps then give them another task that might be easy. So think about what you're going to make and set it all up, prepare it so that it makes things easier when you're putting the um, recipe together as such. Wonderful. Uh, Milanka, I think you've been just mm -hmm. great. And I, I hope Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm actually I, I'm sure my, uh, my clients would feel a little better uh, coping with, you know, managing stay at home kids for, you know, I don't know how long, but yeah. It's been wonderful having you on board and you speaking to us. And I look forward to receiving the video and presenting it to the wider audience. And we do uh, many more of these, you know, these little uh, conversations. Uh, and hopefully we'll have more people joining us. And uh, yeah, even the recipe and, uh, and the cooking demonstration that, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. And we definitely be doing a lot more of those in future. Thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate and I'm on behalf of Dida and all our uh, clients, members of Dida Rati, a very, very big thank you. And be safe and stay well. And we'll be in touch. And always feel free to, you know, share, comment, like, you know, you're very important to Dida. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. And thank you for listening to me. And I hope you enjoyed the recipe that I've put together for the little ones. If there's any questions, feel free to get in touch. And I wish you all well, take care and stay safe and healthy. Bye for now. Uh, bye and check out Milanka's fine foods. I have had a look and they ha it has some wonderful wonderful recipes that you can now that you have a little more time you can try out thank you milanka bye for now bye bye everyone bye. thank you bye. Bye. bye everyone catch you next time